Hey, welcome to this video on the Web Data Grid. And today what I'd like to do is demonstrate for you the feature found in the 10.3 release column summaries for the Web Data Grid. Now you notice here I have a grid on the page. It's bound up to some data. And uh, up in the column areas, I have this little glyph that I can hover over and find out about the units on order summaries, the reorder level summaries. When I click this item, this menu comes up and I can decide which summaries I'd like to see in the grid. So for reorder level, perhaps what I'd like to do is know the minimum, the maximum, and the average. So click OK, it posts back to the server, and now I have those values available to me. And for the units on order, maybe I'm more interested in finding out exactly how many units are on order. And uh, maybe I want to know also how many units are in stock compared to that. So you can see that I can come through each one of the, the columns and decide exactly what you'd like to see within the summary. Now there's a couple customizations done to this grid. I applied uh, some styles to a CSS class so that the, the text here won't line up directly against the border of the grid, and I'll show you how to do that. And also there's a special string format pattern that I've put in here in order to make sure that I get commas if I hit the thousands and I, I'm restricted to only two decimal places. All of this can be done within markup, so let me drop down into Visual Studio and I'll show you how it's done. So here I am in Visual Studio 2010, and I have just a regular ASPX page built. Of course, I've added the script manager to the page because the web data grid will not operate without the script manager. And then I have a SQL data source, and its job is simply to take a look at the products table and uh, return a series of products to the grid. You can see that I have column summaries enabled, and so if I come up to the smart tag and say edit behaviors, I have here summary row turned on, and this gives me my column summaries. So here I have the format string and it's got my customization in here. And let me just take this out for a moment so that you can see how this looks without it. I'll apply this change and then relaunch the page. So here's the grid and if I go to reorder level and say I want the average, you can see that the value that it puts up there is uh, way too long and it wraps and it doesn't look it quite like how I want it to. So that's why when you're setting up this behavior, it's best to figure out exactly what kind of format string you want to use. And so instead of using the default value, I've updated it here so that I have a placeholder for thousands with a comma and then two decimal places. So that gives me a good format string. The other customization I made was to apply the grid summary CSS class. And again, let's take this out and you can see that if I don't have it, what the grid looks like. So adding again the average to the summary now that we have our string format, everything looks good, but you'll see the number is, is squashed right up against the border of the grid. Well, I don't exactly like the way that looks. So like I said, I, within the behavior, I've added in a CSS class, and that's just called grid summary. And so within the markup, here I have my, my grid summary class, and all I've said is padding right is set to four pixels. And that just moves that away from the border just a little bit. But other than that, there's not any other customizations that I really need to make. The grid summaries do a really good job of exposing um, quite a number of calculations that will prove to be pretty useful to a number of your users. So now when I come back, let's just add them all in so you can see what they all look like. And there's my column summaries, which you can apply to any one of the columns of your liking. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.